Council President uh, to share his thoughts with us. Hello and good morning, Dr. Ale. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I was asking earlier when you joined on the program, how is the fuel crisis situation in the region of the country where you are currently situated? Um, thank you very much. As I was saying, that the queue are uh, really very long. And as we speak, petrol uh, per liter, as we speak, in where I am and our region, is selling for... 150, 1,050 naira, 1,005 naira, some place 988 naira, some place 900, some place 1,000. Then when you go to the royal areas, that is the royal communities that are not motorable, they are buying petrol, for whipping some of 2,500, 3,000 naira per liter. Depending on the distance that you will take to transport your petrol from the city to the communities. So as we speak, petrol price is very, very unstable in this area and is alarming. And when things of this nature happen, you know that it bites the middle class and the low class. And it also increases the gap between the poor and the rich, because he's collapsing the middle class in the society. And these are some of the indicators. And if we ask me, were we expecting this kind of things when the president came in and told us that he's removing subsidy? The answer is yes. Why are we saying so? Because before the removal of the subsidy, there were no plans, no templates on ground to see how this impacts where fuel price is going to be regulated by the global uh, crude oil price regulation pattern because we are not producing petrol here. We are not refining. We are importing. And in as much as we are importing, those refineries that are buying our crude at the global market price will definitely sell it at that particular find it. So basically, we were expecting this kind of increase in petrol price. If Anybody tell you that we are expecting it, then the person is not well, really well, telling well, the well, truth. Well, Dr. Alaye, you said you were, ex you were expecting this kind of increase in petrol price when the president, uh, President Bola Tinubu, declared a removal of the fuel subsidy in the country. I believe I speak for a majority of Nigerians when I say Nigerians were not really expecting to be buying petrol at up to 3,000 naira per liter. Even if they were expecting a surge in the prices, it certainly wouldn't have been at this outrageous amount. Because what I'm saying is that because a the truth is, you are trying to deregulate the sector. And if you are deregulating the sector, that means the price, you can't regulate it. You can't regulate the price. The price is not going to be controlled by the crude oil price in the foreign markets, in the global markets. Now, the reason why I said that we were expecting this, we have three owned by the... But none of these have been put into operation. Yes. The Dangote refinery, refinery the ability, that is having problems of having a proof to, 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 to refine. Then, you come you talk about rates in the country. As we speak, it has reduced drastically. Today, we are battling within the range of... Uh, 1.5 uh, 1, 1. million to 1.4 million liter uh, barrel per day. While in um, 2000 and uh, sometime 2005, 2000, we were producing up to 2.2 uh, million to 2.3 million barrel. So the disparity is extremely high. And that is why you see that the NNPC as, a, as an institution under the Federal Government Act has already given 4,500 4, uh, liters for local refinery purpose, yes. um, uh, barrel for lo lo local refinery put, uh, purpose. Why the Dangote refinery you know, is asking for 6,500 uh, barrel? So 
The disparity is completely high, and these indices were not put into place. And today, production has completely reduced. Nigeria is a, a petrol state. Why do I say Nigeria is a petrol state? Nigeria is a state that almost all our earnings are dependent on our export in petrol and natural gas. So, what 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 well it, it appears it appears we are still having issues with our network connection uh with dr alaye we will be needing nothing less than barrel of uh crude to meet around 15,000 barrels exporting it's less than 500 that we earning to run our government the government is going to collapse just have about 10 minutes to wrap up this particular segment of discussion. Welcome back to the program, Doctor. Uh, but before you joined back again, I was discussing with Chief Madaki concerning the uh, uh, environmental hazards being posed in the Niger Delta region by oil exploration that has been going on there for decades. Yet it appears that the Niger Delta people uh, bear the brunt of one, the environmental hazards, and two, high cost of uh, petroleum products. How would you react to this? Um, you know, these are some of the challenges that the people of the Niger Delta has been facing over time. And uh, the organic cleanup that uh, under the Obasanjo regime where United uh, Environmental Program UNEP was given the responsibility to carry out the environmental impact assessment in order to carry out a comprehensive remediation exercise was what was expected to be replicated in the entire Niger Delta. But because of the lack of political will from those that have been managing the affairs of the country and the negligence they have decided to give to the Niger Delta, we are seeing that the people of the Niger Delta are facing with the same environmental degradation at the same time, poor economic situation, at the same time, marginalization from the activities of the oil and gas industry that is domiciled in our region. You know, anytime the Niger Delta people try to register their displeasure on some of these issues, they keep on telling the people in the global communities and other states that the Niger Delta people are hostile people trying to bury the truth. You know, the media to a larger extent has also not been fair. Despite the rates at which we have tried to communicate to the global world how the Nigeria system have decided to suppress the people of the Niger Delta, how they have told us, they have deliberately put us in a scenario that we have to live with the pollution. Because if you come to the Niger Delta, if you talk about the oil and gas industry, Niger Delta is the only only place as we speak that is pollution heaven, where the polluter will pollute the environment and scot free. Nobody pay for compensation. Nobody is being held responsible for polluting the Niger Delta region as IOCs. Why is it so? Because the government is concerned about the economic profit that they will get from the oil and gas industry. And that has been to the disadvantage of the people of the Niger Delta. Well, 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 well you said time again, how, you, you said that, how that, that the people of the Niger Delta have been accused severally of being aggressive uh, towards uh, the, the, the demands that they are relaying to the government for the Ogoni cleanup. And some people are also of the opinion that somehow, in, in line with the oil exploration that is causing environmental hazards in the region, the Niger Delta people themselves, who are operating illegal refining sites in that region, are contributing largely to the uh, pollution of the environments that they are actively crying out about. How would you react to this, and what would be your words to people who are making these allegations? You see, in a society like this, nobody gives approval or gives a nod to anything that is called illegal. But be that as it may, what led to the widespread of this illegality that people are now using as means of livelihood is as a 
result of the failure of the government to give meaningful jobs opportunities to the people. I keep on telling some people that nobody is comfortable going into illegality, knowing the punishments that is attached to such acts. But in a scenario where the government has failed to create opportunities, platform, where people of the Niger Delta can be meaningfully employed to provide food on their tables for their children and for their survival. Believe you me, they will go any means to create that means of livelihood for themselves. And that is why you see that this illegal refinery are now spreading in the Niger Delta. And why is that causing some form of environmental challenges? Because of the mode, the model at which they are um, refining the products. And we have also cried out to the federal government that, look, put these people in a cluster form. Let us see how we can manage the waste. And let us see how we can use, modernize this illegal refiner so that these people can pay that. And they have also told the world that they have the technical know-how to refine these things. Today, the people in the local, local communities are getting petrol for over 3,000 naira a liter. When these illegal refineries are producing, they can but easily get end. that the same one liter for less than 50 naira or 100 naira. So what, what the federal government needs to do is to come, go for a fact funding like the immediate uh, past uh, Buhari uh, Osipanjo regime. They came to the Niger Delta, told us that, okay, they want to look into a scenario where they can uh, modernize the illegal refinery and come up with the modular refinery template. And that was how the modular refinery licenses were given. And to our greater dismay, people of the Niger Delta, the joint extraction that are the host of the oil and gas industry, we are not even looked into in giving of this modular right, uh, 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 licenses. What, what, well, Dr. Well, Alaye... The federal government will come with a template. In a few we words, in a few words, I, I, as we look to close, in a few words, uh, I, I believe you have made strong assertions as to why these occurrences are taking place in the Niger de Delta. But in a few words, what will be your strong message to firstly the federal government and secondly to the NNPCL concerning this fuel crisis that the country is currently ravaged with, which your region is facing the biggest heat? Uh, the truth of the matter is that the NLPC, as a government-owned company, has failed Nigerians. And the Ministry of Petroleum is lacking ideas on how to solve these problems. And that is why you see that the political institutions that we have that ought to have strengthened this NLPC in terms of checkmating their SSs, a company that in less than how many months told us their profit margin for the year 2000, um, 2023 is still coming back to tell Nigerians that as we speak, they are owing importation charges of petroleum products. That is to tell you that the company that is owned by the Nigerian government is lacking transparency. And who are those people that want to have checkmate the essences of this NNPC? The National Assembly? Those committees that are in charge of the National Assembly oversight, they are lacking. And that is why you see that these political institutions have failed us, and Nigerians are not trying to take the bull by the horn by going to the streets to protest. Uh, uh, all right, Dr. Dr. Alaye, I, I must thank you very much. I must thank you for, for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts, your deep wealth of knowledge with us concerning this issue of national concern. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.